post-COVID persistent symptoms. This is a situation where you get the COVID infection and you end up with these weird residual symptoms. And this is called post-viral syndrome, and it can occur from many different types of viruses. So why is this? Well, it's because viruses create a huge amount of oxidative stress in your body, as well as the inflammatory response and the infection itself. It creates a tremendous amount of free radical damage. And if you go into this infection without having enough antioxidant reserve or vitamin and nutrient reserve, you can end up being severely depleted in certain nutrients that give you various symptoms. Now, I think this is the same thing that happens in diabetes. If you take enough nutrients, you don't seem to see the complications of diabetes, like the side effects as much, because these nutrients act as antioxidants. So you see much less complications with the eye, the kidney, the heart, the brain, when you take more nutrients to counter the free radical damage that's occurring from this high level of glucose. Now in a viral infection, specifically the COVID infection, uh, one of the biggest residual problems is chronic fatigue syndrome. Now the medical name for this is myalgic encephalomyelitis. So you get this myalgic, which means muscle, encephalomyelitic like symptoms, which involves a whole series of symptoms related to inflammation of your brain. So a lot of people after COVID get muscle fatigue, muscle pain, headache, brain fog, difficulty breathing, depression, post-exertional malaise. So they feel kind of drained or they have this lethargy when they try to expend energy, chest pain, dizziness, bouts of sweating, POTS, which is a condition where you stand up too quickly and you get dizzy. Of course, they have the classic loss of smell and taste and poor memory. And there's a lot of other associated symptoms as well. Now, what's interesting about this is that these symptoms mimic a vitamin B1 deficiency. They mimic a vitamin B3 deficiency, as in a B1 deficiency, which is beriberi, and a B3 deficiency as pellagra. If you look these up, the symptoms are almost identical, not to mention they cross over a lot of other nutrient deficiencies as well. So what I really think that's happening is the damage done by the virus is not really done by the virus directly. It's done by the massive oxidative stress because of a lack of antioxidant type nutrients and other nutrients that are supposed to counter all this damage. That's what creates a lot of inflammation, your own immune system trying to kill off this virus instead of the virus itself doing the damage. So it would appear to me if we were to focus more on our immune system and give it the necessary nutrients it needs, we might do much better. So let me list the key nutrients that I would recommend to help rebalance the situation in addition to eating healthy, especially a lot of antioxidants. All right, number one is selenium. In one study, it showed that 42% of people who had COVID had a selenium deficiency, okay? And I'm also gonna list the amount that I would recommend. And then some of these nutrients, I'm gonna recommend taking more than usual to help rebalance the situation. Because if you were already deficient going into this infection, and on top of that, the infection really tapping into that last bit of reserve you have, you're gonna have to take more to rebalance. Okay, so selenium, that would be number one. Number two, vitamin D. Vitamin D is very, very important. Uh, one study showed that 76% of people who had COVID were vitamin D deficient. And then you have vitamin B1, thymine, which is actually quite interesting because one study showed that vitamin B1 has the potential to lower your interleukin-17. Now, what is interleukin-17? Well, that has everything to do with the cytokine storm. So vitamin B1 apparently has the potential to lower this cytokine storm. And I would recommend taking 50 milligrams twice a day. And then we get to vitamin B3, niacin. Now, if you're deficient in B3, you're also gonna be deficient in tryptophan. And tryptophan is needed in making not just serotonin, which affects your mood. And if you're deficient in serotonin, you're not gonna be very happy. You're gonna be depressed, but also it's a precursor to melatonin, which can greatly affect your sleep. And for B3, I would recommend taking 500 milligrams twice a day. And then we get to vitamin C. And with vitamin C, I would recommend to try to find a natural source, but you would need at least 500 milligrams once a day. But vitamin C is one of the top antioxidants that you can take. And then we get to zinc, 50 milligrams, very, very important. If you're zinc deficient, you can have quite a few of these symptoms that I just talked about. Then we have magnesium. Magnesium is necessary for generating energy in the mitochondria. So if you have any post-COVID uh, persistent symptoms, 
don't forget zinc as well. So anyway, I just wanted to create this video for those of you that had these strange symptoms after the COVID infection and you wanted to do something about it. And also check out the links that I created down below. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.